Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright, and I am the Resourceful CEO. Today, I'm going to talk to you about recession-proofing your business. There's a, uh, an event coming up on August 24th, 2022, but that event will be evergreen. It will be taped and available to any member of GetWise and members of Dwen that's Dell Women's Entrepreneurial Network. So whatever year you're watching this, you'll be able to see it if you belong to either that platform, which is GetWise, or that group, which is to win. And lots of people are fearful. That's why we're having this conversation. Catherine Rose, the founder and CEO of GetWise, will interview me and we'll be talking about recession proofing your business and all the things from my perspective that help you do that. And first off, just let me tell you that according to the SBA, the stats, the uh, survival stats of businesses over a five year period, from 1997 to 2019, the failure rate was statistically indifferent regardless of whether we were in a recession or not. And that includes the Great Recession. So there were many businesses that failed during the Great Recession, but there were many businesses that started and thrived. So if, if businesses can make it through the Great Recession and even thrive, not just survive, but thrive, then they can <laughs> then you can definitely make it through a downturn caused by supply chain issues and demand adjusting to supply or supply adjusting to demand and so on um, and vice versa, macroeconomics. <laughs> but anyways, the thing is to focus on what your business can do better. It is true that during times of hyper growth, you can cover up things. Like if you're growing really rapidly and getting, um, initial deposits from your customers, then you're not worried about cash flow. But then when your business slows and the cash flow, there's no more initial deposits and you're just getting paid, but you're getting paid like 30 or even 60 days later, although the terms say 30 days, then yeah, now you're going to have a very serious issue with cash flow because you went from all these deposits to now having to manage your receivables but you were not managing your receivables. You were letting them slip for 30 days or more. So th that's not good. So <laughs> obviously now is the time to correct that. Another thing, a lot of people are fearful about raising prices. Lots of companies are raising prices. The, the, the thing here is to raise prices by focusing on value. So you raise the price, but people, your customers or clients, perceive it as uh, you adding more value for that additional increase. And you can do that by making sure that you convey what they're getting for free. So some of these things you may already include, but you haven't communicated it well to your customers. And if you haven't communicated it well, then they don't know. You cannot assume that your customers know that they're getting if you're not sure that they truly understand the value proposition, if you don't have salespeople that really communicate the value proposition, then talk to your customers. If you have a lot of them, poll them. If you have, you know, do a survey. If you have few clients, just make phone calls and ask them, what do they think you offer? How do you different, how do you stand out from your competitors? And that's where you, you know, where there's, where there's shortcomings, you adjust, and when think where things are good, you um, you make sure you play that up. So again, focus on adding value. You can add value by um, like through through guarantees or warranties. Um, you guarantee service for thirty days or ninety days or however long, or you can warranty. Um, you know, provide a one year warranty or a two year warranty or something like that, maybe over and above the manufacturer's warranty, or you can take, you can say, send it to, you know, I will handle the product issue and you don't have to go to the manufacturer for a certain period of time. Anyways, there's many different ways to go about this, depending on the type of business that you're delivering. If you, if you, for instance, um, 
I'm, I don't really, I tend to focus on, B, B, on B2B companies, but if you're a consumer focused company and such as a hair salon, then you may say, if you don't like our services, then your next service is free or you get a 30% discount or half off or something like that if you didn't like the haircut. Personally, I believe that if someone is really upset about their haircut, just give them another one free or offer them an additional, <laughs> offer them an, another service of the same value that they will, uh, you know, they'll be okay with. Maybe they don't want you to cut their hair again if you mess it up. But you get my point. The point is to, what is it that your customers value and to add that as, uh, as, as something that will differentiate you from your, um, from your competitors. And then of course you have to strengthen your operations so that they don't need to, uh, you don't need to deliver on it. I mean, be pre you're prepared to deliver, but the point is to get, you know, get it down to the point where you very rarely have to deliver it. And so, because the point is for everyone to be very happy with your service, not for them to keep coming back to get freebies for all your mistakes. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> anyways, another point about a recession proofing your business is to, is to look at, make sure you have the right people in the right seats. So are the, are, the people, are the right people at your company? Are they the, uh, the right people for the positions that they're in? If not, can you move them to different positions? And if they're just not a fit for the company, now is the time to, is to uh, now is the time to release them to do better things and to do so in a very compassionate way. Um, but first, I always say, see if they can find another position in a company. I remember I had a client who had this product um, project manager who just really wasn't that good. <laughs> but he was great with the customers. So it, we, I said, we have to switch him. Don't fire him. Don't fire him. Switch him into a business development position because we were actually looking for a business development person. And he thrived. And that really, I mean, he was personally responsible for driving a 20% a increase in the business. The business grew overall by, what was it? Uh, just under 50%, but that guy switching him from project manager to business development manager drove 20% in a year. And then we found a different project manager who was much better suited. And so we were also able to then deliver higher quality <laughs> customer service, which obviously helped overall. So make sure you have the right person in the right seat in the, on the right bus. Is your company the right bus? And are they the right person culturally and skill-wise and, um, and so on? So these are the things to think about. These are the things to really tighten up and focus on and help drive whatever strategy you're going to do. You also need to think about your strategy. How are you, what are your goals and objectives? That's one thing you need to be very clear on. And then how are you going to achieve it? How are you going to achieve it is what is called your strategy. And that differs for different companies, different, you know, you have different objectives. You may want to take five years to do what someone else wants to take 15 years to do, or you may want to take five years to do what someone else may want to do in two years. So obviously, your strategies would differ um, because the pace of what you want to do would differ. Anyways, these are just some of the ways that you can recession-proof your business. I may revisit this topic if you guys comment and say, hey, I want to know more. I want you to go into detail. But until I hear from you about that, <laughs> I think I'll just wait. I'm not, I don't believe in buying into any kind of negative group think. Never have, never will. If you have if you have a vision for your business, then work to that business. Don't think about all the negative things that could happen. Remember, our minds tend to go to the negative. I know very few people who go, oh my gosh, what would happen if 
great things happened to my business. It would just be so exciting. You know, they go, oh my gosh, what would happen if this negative thing happened or that negative thing happened? <laughs> so try to think about what would happen if your business grew much faster. How would you handle that? How would you do that? Think positively about your business. Have faith that you will achieve your goals and objectives. If you don't have goals and objectives, determine what those are so that you can hold that vision into your in your head and work toward it. Again, I'm Tiffany C. Wright, the resourceful CEO. Please make sure that you, if this is on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe. If it's not on YouTube, then please just comment. Well, if it's on YouTube also, just please just comment. Again, Tiffany C. Wright, the resourceful CEO.